Alright guys, it's late in the day. I have not been vlogging as much as I intended to originally today. So I was going through the build list on my 14 and a half inch build that I did for my wife. And one of the questions that I asked at the beginning of the video wasn't answered. The age old question, should you build it or should you buy it? Um, so I went through and I kind of calculated cost and it came out to be right around $2,700, $2,800. Now, the ultimate question here is, would I have been better off buying, you know, a $27, $2,800 rifle? We're going to find out. So this is the build. I'll show you guys again. This is the Rainier Arms PDW stock, Strike Industries trigger, and this, of course, is the Ascend Armory lower and upper set. Currently a hollow sun sitting on here, but disregard that because for this video it's not going to matter too much. This is their, I don't want to say knockoff because honestly they did it better, but their forend. And running the Silencer Co. Saker slash Omega slash Hybrid Brake. Um, so this rifle is running a 223 Wild fluted match barrel. Sitting inside, obviously, a free float handguard, inside of a $650 receiver with a $300 trigger, and a $350 PDW stock. Will an out of the box rifle beat it? That's going to be the vlog for today, but I'm actually turning this day three vlog into a comparison video where I'm comparing build versus bot. Does one beat the other? Speaking candidly, the first name that comes to mind when I think of really expensive, are you just paying for the name? Are you paying for quality? What the hell are you actually buying? Mmm, Noveski. Yeah, Noveski pretty much every single time is the one thing that I'm like, why do people pay so much money for these things? Um, I decided I was going to find out. So, this is going to be kind of the start of the vlog, but I'm going to keep it short, and then this is going to kind of turn into a bit of a review, followed by like... I don't know, how I would end my day after review, and maybe show you guys some of my editing process, or I don't know, we'll get there when the time comes, but ultimately this weekend we are going to be shooting the two side by side, we being my wife and myself. So I think the question that everyone ultimately would want to know is, is your build going to be more reliable? Meaning mine, or if you followed along with mine. Um, is it going to be more accurate? What are you gaining? Are there any benefits to buying something like a Noveski? ridiculously expensive ARs. I'm going to try and go over that to the best of my ability. So we are going to be throwing a Vortex Razor HD2 on top of both of them. And the reason for that is if I was just doing it with a red dot and you're basing it off of how well I can see a red dot, not a good comparison. So we're going to be using the best glass, in my opinion, that's pretty much out there, shy of maybe Schmidt and Bender. Um, don't argue with me on that. And uh, we're going to put the two side by side. A really, really fun part of this is going to be the fact that that's a 14 and a half inch build with a pinned break. Noveski's, pretty much all of their 16 inch rifles, are 13.7 inches with the KX3 pinned. So it's going to be like an actual 16 inch versus 16 inch, not barrel length, but overall. So using these side by side, you guys are going to be able to see the difference between 13.7 inches, 14 and a half inches, comparing build versus bot. And for fun, I'm gonna throw out an 18 inch 223 wild and we're gonna shoot that at the same distance as well. And that is a match grade rifle. So um, let's see how they stack up. This is what a Noveski looks like in paper form. So first order of business. And I actually really want the Infidel. Let's see if they have it in stock. None of this is premeditated. This is all just kind of on the fly. Let's see. Boom. There we go. Noveski. 13.7 inch. 26.59.99. So let's take a first look at this rifle. In contrast, I have to admit, it's kind of boring. Can't tell if I love or hate the stock. I do like the handguard. 
I do like the KX3 or 4 or 5 or whatever they're up to now. Um, I like that it comes with backup iron sights. I'm not a fan of the MBUS. MB controls, that's always good. So honestly it kind of looks like a mil spec AR, but you know, looks can be deceiving. So um, I think I'm pretty sold on this actually. So again, let's make sure that they actually have it in stock. Three left. Awesome. Time to go for a car ride. You guys may have noticed in the comment section that sometimes I'll leave troll comments alone and just... <laughs> sometimes I'll joke with them or joke back because honestly more than anything it's entertainment value for me but sometimes you will see me light off on people. When that happens, it's because somebody addressed my success, they called me a fake, they called me a fascist, or they brought up family. No, I don't have rich family. I don't have any family. Nobody left me anything. Everyone just died. Yeah, they died poor too. Just how I was raised. Um, so this guy was like, how is it that you have all this nice stuff when I work two jobs, I'm, you know, I work for FedEx and I'm an EMT. You must live with your mommy. Oh, sir. <laughs> Let me tell you something, your attitude isn't getting you anywhere. The way that you treat people is not helping you. You want that promotion? You're probably not going to get it because, um, well, you're a dick. You know, if you're going to fake one thing in life, at least professionally, fake not being an asshole. I do it every day and it works just fine for me. Anyways, rant over. In the car, on my way to reading your arms go see what all this hype about Noveski is about. I have to be honest, I've never owned a Noveski rifle before. Um, I have owned one of their lowers. I think it was like a, a chainsaw or a saw blade or something like that. And everyone was like, oh man, Noveski lower. And I was just like, it's just a mil spec lower. It's 70, 75, just like yours that cost 60 bucks. I happened to get mine into trade back when you used to be able to trade guns in the good old days. Um, so, I know very, very little about them. I know that if you have an Oveski rifle that is a full length, it's more than likely 13.7 inches and pinned, and they love using their KX 3, 4, 5, 11, minor. I don't even know what number they're up to now, but their little flash hider brake compensator thing. Um, which works really well. I actually shot next to somebody who had one on and I mean he was Right here next to me. It wasn't great still, but it wasn't as terrible as you know someone shooting Not suppressed next to you usually is so um, For whatever it's worth they do work really well again to reiterate this is gonna be cool because we're gonna be comparing a really really high-end like almost the cost of a SCAR 17 high-end uh, AR platform against something that I built and right around the same price so build it or buy it this is gonna be me kind of putting literally my money where my mouth is when this is all said and done this little adventure is gonna cost well a lot um, but worth it, you know, if it's knowledge that I can put out there for you guys, and again, ultimately, it's not like I'm losing the gun. Um, I buy guns because I like guns. I will admit, I do buy guns with you guys in mind occasionally, but if it's not something that I wouldn't have wanted, I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. The closest thing that I've ever done to that is getting the arsenal, but with the impending ban anyways, I had no problem buying the arsenal. Um, would I have got it if I didn't have the intention of reviewing it? Probably not. Honestly, I probably would have bought, I don't know, another Sentry if I really wanted another AK. And again, if that Sentry didn't run, still cool, still has history. Um, this Noveski better run, I'll tell you that much right now. This is a legal rifle though, right? It's not a short barrel? No. Just gonna thought. Um, 
That's a uh, pin 137. M002. Okay. Fat free, gluten free, low sodium. They cater to millennials. First comment gets a free hat. Ben was over here giving me side notes saying, take it out of the plastic. And I'm like, I only do that on video for the viewers. <laughs> oh, so pretty. Hi, I'm Ben. Ben's a good guy. I make him count everything. 11, niner. <laughs> All right, back in the car, new rifle in the back seat. That was like a two for one kind of trip. They actually had not only the rifle that I was lusting after, but uh, they also had BNT drum mags. I mean, of all random things for them to have, they have freaking everything there. So I took a couple of really quick video clips of the actual buying of the rifle in the store. Um, I'm gonna contact uh, my buddy Jeff. He's actually the CFO of Rainier Arms and make sure it's okay that I actually use that clip. Um, it's it's always nice to ask in advance just simply for the fact that, you know, um, it's not your business. And um, anyways, I, I just ask for permission. It's just, it's polite. Um, I would be kind of weirded out if I saw, I don't know, my business on YouTube, so. Um, I'm sure he won't have a problem with it, but it's always good to ask in advance just because, you know, it's the polite thing to do. They treat me well, so I'm going to treat them with respect, and again, it's reciprocal. It's all about that attitude. Um, everyone that works here is always extremely nice. Um, you know, whether I'm buying stuff or not, it's just a bunch of really great guys. So this may come as a surprise to you guys. I know it's going to be a shock, but um, I kind of have like a lot of tattoos. Uh, some stores treat me very poorly because I'm tattooed. So when it comes to gun shops or places where I'm going to be spending lots of money, if I've never been there before, if I've never dealt with their staff, the first thing that I will do when I go in the store is ask about expensive stuff, leave, not buy it. The reason that I do that is if I'm a guy with tattoos, I'm asking about expensive stuff when people usually assume that, you know, you have the uh, career record tattoos, such as your hands, face, throat. Um, if they still treat you with respect, and they don't treat you like a criminal, they just treat you like they would anyone else, you just won my business. So what you guys see in the comment section about my tattoos and about their opinions, I have to deal with that in real life on a daily basis. And I look at that as a blessing in disguise just simply for the fact that if people are gonna be assholes to me, boom, at face value, you lost my business, you lost potential friendship, you lost a potential job, you know, I'm, we own multiple businesses. So, um, it's a really good way of vetting people and seeing if they're just going to treat you like shit based on appearance or if they're genuine people who are either nice or really good at faking it, like I mentioned earlier. So me walking into a gun shop where people don't know me, I'm six foot seven, 220 pounds. You guys know what I look like. Um, and I am usually semi-open carrying, you know, I can seal carry, quote unquote, but outside the waistband, and if you were to look, you could tell that I'm carrying a gun. Um, how do people receive me? Well, usually not very well. Now, when I start asking questions about expensive guns, people get a little wary. Um, can I see this? Can I see that? If people are like, oh, well, you know, we don't actually have that. And, and they make up these bullshit stories of like, I just don't want you trying to steal our stuff. I'm never coming back. So, uh, so it's rare that I flame anyone, but Welcher's Gun Shop in Lakewood, sorry, 
you guys suck. I wanted to see a pair of night sights for one of my Glocks. This guy's gonna steal her $100 sights. Yeah, motherfucker. If only you knew. I guarantee. Anyways, I have more guns in my armory than you do in your entire shop, and you're gonna judge me? Okay. Well, congratulations. Um, I shoot next door every single day. Never buying anything from the actual gun shop. Fuck that. So, anyways, what's the point? Uh, the first time I walked in, I was actually asking about a scar that I saw that they may have had in stock. They did, and I was like, okay, well, I'd really like to think about it. And what did they ask me? Do you want me to put your name on it and hold it aside for you? I'm sorry, wait, what? You would do that for me? Yep, and they did. And guess what? I bought it. So everyone at Rainier Arms, uh, they treat everyone equally. They treat people with respect. Just absolutely amazing customer service. And everything about them, I, I honestly can't say enough. When you walk into their shop, it feels like you are walking into a family member's house. Um, you're always greeted and they do, you can tell, they do their very, very best to remember your name. Um, and they try and greet you by name. And if they don't know your name, they ask it. They don't pretend like they don't. Um, I'd be hard pressed to tell you guys that my name's hard to forget. I can't remember what the fuck I was gonna say! This is starting to sound like I'm trying to sell you guys on this. By all means, shop around. Um, nobody's paying me or giving me discounts or anything to say any of this. Um, I'm just letting you guys know that if you are a tattooed freak like myself, you will be treated with respect if you go into right in your arms. That's all I'm saying. Um, and again, I don't get any discounts, I don't get any deals, I pay the same price that you guys would. Uh, that is the honest to God truth. So, take that for whatever it's worth. I'm gonna stop yakking so I can drive like an asshole and get home quicker to unbox this gun a little better. Someone was like, hey, can you change the backdrop and maybe do a little more lighting? <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, but... 4T5 high outputs should work for now. I'm gonna find a different spot. Um, I don't really have another room to do reviews in right now. Um, I did order another tech mat, so you guys don't have to stare at my rug, but oh well. If this isn't enough light for you, I don't know what is. I am burning to death, good lord. So here's our box wasn't squished when I got the rifle. Um, trying to put it all back together in the store proved a little problematic. So I've seen just as much as you guys have so far. I had the receipt from the wife. Um, up to this point right here. And my change. Not included. Your dollar seventy-three. You don't actually get that with a rifle. So, let's start with accessories. We get a cute little Noveski hat. Free to any one of you who wants it. Comment saying, hmm. The first person to come up with a funny comment gets this hat. How about that? I don't eat candy, but it's pretty cool. Um, they give us gummy bears. You know, so when you're at the range, being tactical, you can eat your fat-free, gluten-free, and low-sodium Albanese brand gummy bears. Interesting touch. They give us a Gen 3 PMAG. Very cool of them. Noveski obviously has partnerships with Frog Lube as well as Magpul. Um, if that's not blindingly apparent, it should be. Everything accessory wise on this is going to be Magpul and they give you a tube of frog lube. I have tried the frog lube before and it worked great but again for me gun butter will always be my jam. Let's look at their manual and all included stuff. Wow okay so my build did not come with that. Product number, model number, serial number, barrel number, 
date of manufacture, 1226.18. Today is 1.12.19. So this is less than a month old. That's pretty neat. And this is actually embossed paper. So something that would actually be worth keeping. Can't say that about a lot of things that come with normal guns. The Noveski Black Rifle Manual. So unlike your multi-use manuals, this one actually comes, wow, with really high quality photos. And this one is actually for this specific rifle, as opposed to your companies that give you like a, you know, all-encompassing, this works for most of our guns kind of thing. Actual full color detail photos of how to disassemble your bolt carrier group, which is really cool. Um, and they're actually using a 5.56 cartridge in all the photos because they realize that most people don't carry, you know, roll pin punches out in the field with them. So it's cool that they show some realism. The fact that they give you this much detail on how to field strip their rifles kind of says a lot about the confidence in their quality, just simply for the fact that, you know, you can actually take our stuff apart and uh, you won't break it if you do. So, that's really cool. Uh, definitely the highest quality manual I have ever seen. And again, that comes back to the, are we paying for the manual or are we paying for the rifle? I really wish it was just the Iron Cross logo that said Noveski, but the Flaming Pig thing is also pretty cool. So, I'm a big collector of stickers. They don't necessarily always go on my car, but they always do go on my toolbox. Grants Pass, Oregon, which is very, very far south Oregon, so not super close to me, but close-ish. So this will be a first. I'm actually going to fill out this registration card and send it in. I don't ever really do that, but I am this time. A Noveski branded lock. At least they went through the trouble of putting their name on it, so that's cool. Take the rifle out and hide it from me really quick. Let's see if there's anything else hiding in here. Damn. Hell yeah. So they also include an M-Lock mount. And this can go obviously anywhere you want it. They didn't put it on your rifle assuming that either A, you may not want one, or B, it's probably not gonna be in the right spot anyways. So thank you Noveski, that's actually really cool. And how cool is this? Not only do they give us the amount, they give us cuties for a sling. That's just, that's just nice. That's, that's quality right there. So, again, am I paying for this stuff? Am I paying for this? I'm sure I'm paying for a little bit of it, you know. Um, but the fact that it is included, that's a huge bonus, because I was actually going to go and get some... QD M lock stuff anyways, so um, the fact that they thought to throw that in there for us is cool. On to the packaging. Um, it is just cardboard and really, really thick styrene foam, but it protects the rifle in shipping. Another thing that, you know, some companies ought to think about. As you guys saw in the store, I refused to take it out of the package, so I could do it the first time here. So, and for usual me fashion, just give a quick run over the entire rifle. Pull that off. The Noveski, I believe it's badass charging handle, which is obviously a copy or a rebranded Radiant Raptor. And if we look at the other side, there's our AMB controls. And yes, I am going to change this out for the MOE K grip. That'll always be true. It's the grip I run on everything. 
from the factory, pre-installed steel Magpul M-Bus backup iron sights. Obviously front and rear, I don't even know why I had to show you that, but I did. And we get a chamber flag, pre-installed, says Noveski on it. And of course we are still going to check, it is in fact clear. Huh. Either I didn't do that all the way, or... Yep. So, 60 degree selector from the factory. Um, I will say that I don't like plastic selectors, and I don't like that it says Magpul on it. Am I ultra picky? Yep, I am. Um, so, that's gonna get changed, but that's not a knock to them, it's just my personal preference. Um... Really nice. For a combat trigger, that is a really, really nice trigger. Really, really, really nice feeling trigger. Um, again, just a tiny little bit of squish initially, but super clean break. And the resets. Extremely positive. I like it. All right, let's take it down. Okay. Very clean machining on the inside. Everything looks, well, like a really expensive rifle. I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Put this on safe so I don't accidentally drop the hammer. Here's our ambi bolt release, so no need for a bad lever or anything like it. So this is their ambi mag release. It's, I'm going to say like ambi 1.5. Not a complete true ambi, but at this point I'm kind of nitpicking, but I'm going to say MB 1.5. It does work both ways. And again, bolt release. So, very quality receiver and a staked castle nut. Something that I never do. I probably should. I never have, really. Um, I've never had any problems not doing it, but um, it is good practice. And like I mentioned, it's going to be Magpul furniture and grips and accessories. This is the MOE SLK. Haven't shouldered it yet, but I'm sure it feels just like any other standard Magpul or, you know, um, other Magpul six position variant. So the blast shields are something that you don't actually see the inside a lot of. It's not just conical tube. It is actually a cone on the inside. There is a lot of engineering that actually goes into these things. And again, this is pinned and welded. Um, I can't actually see the pin, nor can I see the weld. So, call it a blind pin, I suppose. The fit of everything is extremely well done. Um, you can kind of tell that they built the handguard around the KX-3 as far as dimensions go. It's just too perfect, which isn't a bad thing. It looks great. And mid-length gas system, just like the AR build we're going to be comparing this to. So everything's going to be fair on that front. And I was right, this is the Noveski Super Badass charging handle. And it is super badass. Aptly named. I'm going to have to edit that part out because I don't want to show you guys assembling a weapon. Full auto bolt carrier group. I'm gonna do this off camera, so I'm not assembling anything on camera. But I am going to push this in place on camera. So what else is there really to say? It is a great looking rifle. Um, it's extremely high quality. Is it better than my build? Um, 
Obviously, I want to say no. Aesthetically, no. I am going to say no. But as far as how it runs, time will tell. To answer the question, just handling it. Build or buy. Is it worth it? Honestly, with the Gen 4 Noveskis, I'm going to say yeah. These are definitely worth the money. So now the ultimate question. As far as aesthetics go, build or buy, I'm still going to say build. But if you didn't want to build and you wanted to buy, if I was to tell you to buy a rifle, having never even shot this yet, um, from the box, I definitely have to say this is the nicest AR-15 I have ever handled. That is the honest to God truth. Um, I have handled the Gen 3s, and they were nice, but they were not this nice. So if you guys are looking for a super high quality out of the box AR that you want to know is going to run, that you don't want to have to do any guesswork on, um, this is definitely a huge win. I am, like I said, going to add my own stuff. Um, I am going to change the selector. I am going to change the grip. But those are the only two things that I'm going to change, just to keep it fair, um, between my other build and this. So we will see which one wins, both accuracy and reliability. I'm not going to clean this, I'm not going to do anything to it. It's going to go from my living room to the range. So we're going to test accuracy straight from the box, and I should say straight from the build with the other one. And on top of that we're also going to be doing durability and reliability test. I'm going to put a thousand rounds through this and a thousand rounds through the other one and see how many malfunctions, if any, we get with either of them. But on top of that, I'm also going to do a three round group test after the fact as well as before and compare and see if, well, anything changes. So that is the Noveski Gen 4. This is the Infidel. I'm in love with it, you guys. I think it's really neat. And again, um, hands down the nicest AR I've ever handled out of the box. As far as cool factor goes, mine wins just because I built it myself. But if I was to buy one or if you were to ask me which to buy, just straight out of the gate, um, having handled it and played with it, no Vesky, for sure. Um, I don't think you can go wrong. Anyways, that's going to wrap this part up. Back to the vlog. This is ridiculous. Things I do for you guys. But again, all you have to do is ask. One person complains. Hey, need more light. You got it, bud. Um, really quick, I want to show you guys this. Pretty excited. Try to do it one-handed. Ba 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 ba. So my mission to get a drum for the BNT, complete. They had it in stock. And I was so pumped about the ETS mags that I got a 40 round mag for my MP5. I'm going to give it a try and if it runs, I'm going to buy a ton of these. We'll see. Very serious things have to happen right now. Um, I'm going to have to run through my house and clear every individual room with my new gun. You'd be lying if you said you didn't do it too. I don't even want to film anymore. I just want to play with this gun. This thing is freaking sweet. Um, really, really stoked on it. Had a really good day. Um, this video is going to be shorter, maybe longer even. I'm, I'm not even sure. But I'm going to go clear some rooms and kill some jihadists and uh, uh, start editing so I can get ready for tomorrow. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you tomorrow. So as I was cleaning up and getting this ridiculousness out of the way and very carefully putting everything back in the box something else hit me that I didn't really think to bring up and it's really as simple as why was I being so careful with the box? well resale value if I was to resell this gun um, it wins hands down mind you I have no intentions of selling this and ever sell anything but would you rather buy an Obeski or Hey, I built this AR-15, you wanna buy it from me? It's $3,000 worth of shit in here. It's like, no. 
hey, you want to buy a Gen 4 Noveski? Sure. So another thing to think about is resale value. Does somebody want to buy something that you built? Or does somebody want to buy a brand new Gen 4 Noveski? Maybe worth considering if you're putting that much money into it. Just a thought. Okay. Okay, officially done. Good night.